we are recording. Yes, now we are recording. Hello. Hello. <laughs> right, so we're here now to discuss the sort of um, uh, the story, the main arc story from like, well, I suppose Seeker all the way up to Murphy Station. Uh, the the main arc of Chaos Nova Universe, mm -hmm. basically, because right now the stories that we have shared are taking place on very detailed levels. Uh, just to just to explain to you what uh, what I'm showing on the screen, I am currently displaying like fractally spirals <laughs> in the screen. Can I view it bigger? Should I... Should I share my screen with you? Yeah, can do. Let's do that, then you can see what the viewers can see. I'm operating from low-tech notepads, so... Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't need my computer right now, so share away! Bam! <laughs> so, which one is the most suitable? Okay, let's take, take this one. My internet connection is... Right, so... Uh, to sum up, the main arc or storyline of Chaos Nova uh, is, uh, is sort of compli uh, compiled of or comprises of many smaller stories that lead to uh, one major timeline and then we will learn that uh, this timeline is sort of the main branch or, or the, the main stem out of which many other timelines branch off and there shall be certain interactions between the main stem and the branching timelines uh, it is we, we we have we have our own system figured out basically for that mm -hmm. and uh this this whole this whole thing it is it works like uh it basically works like a metaphor for uh for storytelling or a metaphor for uh uh save games when you have your main game and then you have the offshoots and variations and even though you can experiment in the different, uh, in the alternate lines, or or in different uh, uh, different sub saves or or sub streams. It all still adds up together into the same main thing. So that's that's like <laughs> that's the crux of it. Mm -hmm. There there are there are more than one of everything. The the stories that we have are merely one variation of many possible uh, possible timelines. So it's like it's 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 not that uh, what a coincidence that this character happens to be in that timeline. No, that's not the case. The this character is described because that is the timeline that we are observing. So we are we are observing many smaller offshoots or branches of the main reality, and at some point during the main arc, our characters that we have already read about are meeting up with the with the people who are actually managing or or who who are inhabiting the quote unquote main timeline or main branch. And they will learn of certain space-time wedgie manipulations that allows uh, for exchanging knowledge and exchanging people between these sub-realities and the main reality. This okay. This this may be when I put it like this, it sounds a little bit confusing. But uh, but trust me, we we. We ha we have an idea what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I I lost my shiny image. So this one. So this this image is actually a pretty good illustrator. So even though 
there there are all these uh, story variations going on and the, the closer you zoom in the more variations you can see and the more detailed variations there are it all uh, builds up into one uh, one system and uh, so it's 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 not the case of uh, let's say parallel realities or, or alternate timelines in a way that you see in some some other uh, science fiction works where the parallel things uh, uh, where, where you can where you can go back. Uh, let's say you go back to past and influence something and that uh, changes your current future uh, what we have is as long as long as you are in a given reality and interacting with it that is all you can influence however all the uh, all the uh, variations are in the end so all the variations are sort of branching off from the main storyline but they are also adding up to the main storyline and uh, right now the question that we are facing is how do we get from the stories that uh, we have been sharing for example the story of Seeker and uh, the story of Taking Flight which is currently not in its final form, but it is it is concise enough to show. So, how do we get from those character based, uh, character centric stories to the point where these characters will uh, will interact with the uh, uh, with another set of characters who are uh, who who are sort of uh, aware. Of this this whole system, it's so simple when you put it like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like we we are we uh, we have a very clear idea what the character stories are in this uh, detail level, and also we have a pretty clear idea. Uh, where the big story arc ends up so this is this is uh what we are currently working on or experiencing in the storyline of deja vu the do, 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 let me open up So it's, uh, again, bringing uh, bringing in uh, metaphors and comparisons uh, with other works. Uh, in uh, one one good comparison is the in times like these uh, universe, uh, which I greatly enjoy. So there, uh, there you have time travel, and uh, I think in the second or third book. Uh, it is revealed that uh, the time manipulations or, or the time streams are in fact uh, fractal. So when when you are changing something and when you are interacting with the time, then uh, uh, then you end up sort of snowflaking the uh, or br branching or snowflaking the the timeline. So there there are actually many realities but i think uh, one major difference with us is that uh, is that you can sort of it is it is still uh, time manipulation so you can still return to your main thing having influenced your main thing but in our case you can't directly manipulate events uh, you, you can't try time travel basically <laughs> you, you can you can sidestep into a mm, into a uh, branching timeline and do some stuff there but when you when you return to your given reality or your your native reality then 
everything that happens there still happens there. Mm -hmm. You can only you can only go and fail in another timeline and learn and return to your your own reality with that new knowledge. So that is that is one major point. Okay, so déjà vu is. Trash is one major point, and déjà vu is another major point. Form leakage. <laughs> <laughs> the difficult part is that some of, some of these stories have been played out uh, in the forum environment. However, our current uh, storytelling standards have changed. The mm -hmm. skill levels have changed, so some of the stuff that worked in the forums will not work as a uh, as a commercial story. Right, so story time. Deja vu. It was happening again. <laughs> so this is this is this is where our our heroes or the characters that we know from elsewhere will start interacting with the headquarters that has the tools to manipulate timelines. Picking up trash is is where we have characters within their own reality doing their own thing. So picking up trash, uh, seeker, salvage mission, all of these are like characters within their own reality. And and the point where they will end up in is the déjà vu reality, where uh, where the characters will become aware of this uh, whole branching and and uh, and sidestepping thing. So the working goal from all this talk. Can I open this and be? No. Yeah. So the uh, uh, the the working goal from from all this big talk is uh, we need to figure out how to get from here to here without overstraining ourselves. Because uh, on one hand, yes, there are interesting stories going on 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 the character within reality level. But if we tang if we get tangled too far in them, or like if we tangle ourselves too much in them, we will overstrain our capabilities, and we just won't make it into the main arc. So it's like uh, we need to figure out the stories we need to tell for getting our characters from here to here <laughs> <laughs> basically mm -hmm. or 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 from let's see from from here to here <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the the metaphors can be a little bit clumsy <laughs> but uh but but we 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 kind of know what we're what we're trying to achieve <laughs> hey man it would be easy yeah. No, you bother. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nux, you, you had some ideas, didn't you? I've, I've got it down to five. Okay. In, okay. I should point out that this is just the Corey, Destiny, Nux, Chaos, uh, trouble side. Like, so if, if we're ignoring Seeker and all the mm. other stuff for a minute, I've got it down to five. Mm -hmm. Take and flight. Smugglers Run, Alicia, Servo and the Boogeyman, uh, Boogeyman, which is where they off him, and then number five, Murphy Station, Deja Vu. I've managed, I, and but this is still a work in progress. Uh, so I, I would say that there is one major issue with outlining like this is that this outlines the chronological step, that uh, the chronological steps that the characters will have to go through but uh, the issue or the goal that I have in mind is more about 
how do we start dripping uh, the information that there is some bigger shit going on so i think that's right now this is our uh, our most uh, this this is the weakest uh, weakest point in the storytelling like we we know how to tell the uh, the character based parts uh -huh. well, okay we we can still get our skills better but we were basically we basically know the stories that we're telling there we also know the story that we're telling once we've reached the deja vu point uh -huh. but uh, the the connecting part i think is missing like we we don't know yet how to uh how to start introducing the weirdness so that uh, the characters as well as the readers will start picking up that okay uh something is off here there there must be something else going on mm -hmm. so for example in uh, in case of seeker this would be all the little things that uh uh that in uni that in timeline uh, seem to be coincidences so it's like how come uh how come fortune uh happened to escape just before uh, uh Joel got to the presentation how come the uh at the dude that Joel had once arrested herself ended up in the same uh, presentation where her brother ended up in uh, and and uh, I think there there were other other uh, tidbits like this, and mm -hmm. uh, and we have planned to assign some uh, in timeline meddling to these things. So for example, an in timeline meddling uh, would happen when uh, uh, when Jewel has started the uh, Jewel has started uh, the contract. Uh, to to free fortune, and once she once she interacts with the once she um, how should I say once she opens it takes on the case the whole web of secrets that comes with that case is suddenly out and the people mm. who uh, who were behind the conspiracy that that got her her brother arrested in the first place those people will know that uh, these secrets are now uh, in danger of being exposed so they will assign uh, Rafe to uh, to get and intercept shit what, at, at whatever cost so so basically within the timeline there are certain manipulations that okay this thing happens be because some somebody doesn't want their secrets to get out and uh, and uh, at some point we should learn that there was in fact some uh, inter-reality meddling as well so for example you could say oh so if if somebody was able to influence uh, things that uh, that happen within timeline why didn't they get fortune out of the prison sooner and uh, the, the reason could be that well we have seen the many variations and and in the in the timelines where that happened the other results were not good or whatever so basically there there should be the uh the 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 main stem or main branch level meddling somewhere in the system mm -hmm. we need these little moments of the quote unquote taken flight arc mm -hmm. I think that might be something that reveals itself as we go into taking flight more in depth. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are a couple of things like it's awfully convenient that during the smugglers run, the Alexis doesn't get hit by the virus that's affecting everybody else or isn't affected in the same way that all the other ships are. Um, so, I mean, that's that's that could be one mm -hmm. as an example. Um, I mean, him finding the the facility that he escapes to is potentially another example. Yeah, I, I think we have even uh, uh, we have even entertained the thought that at certain points, uh, Corey Henderson and friends are getting are being dropped 
certain hints or basically some sometimes their actions are being nudged uh, in certain direction without their their, their realizing that this is happening mm-hmm. and of course one major thing with all of these uh, connecting dots or the Murphy level and in reality level interactions is that most of the time these are not direct most of the time the Murphy station is just sitting there observing the different timelines and uh, and picking out the the ones where they can pull people out of mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of the times they they are they, they are playing the long game they are playing the sort of uh, building your stack game and uh, and uh, the points where somebody from Murphy's side is actually actively intervening in the matters of another timeline like those those moments should be few and far between and they should be like major dramatic turning points yeah hmm a lot to think about yeah <laughs> smarty <laughs> pretty picture Ah, uh, and uh, one, uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, I think I've left out one important point is that uh, while all this uh, reality branching goes on, uh, the the device or the trope or the the mechanics that allows all this interaction is that if people beings from uh from uh higher up so if if people move around if people are interacting with a reality that is not their own let's say you start from here and you move down the branch or or, or uh, if you move farther into the branching parts then that interacting uh, introduces a time disparity so like for an external viewer such as the author <laughs> uh, the the reality that happens here the, the events that happen here and the events that happen here might very well happen at the same time so we just have the different variations of the same thing we have the the whole picture but if a if a character from this timeline is moving down the branch then subjectively they will uh, experience it as if going forward in time so it's like the the farther in the branchings the the farther ahead the events are so for example uh, in deja vu when uh, our heroes are finding themselves seeing the events that they know have already happened this means that they are comi coming from uh, some sort of sub-branch and they are being pulled closer to the central reali reality mm. so this is uh, again we we don't ever expect it to uh, be realistic in any sense this is a storytelling device this is and and this is a, also a storytelling metaphor like these are our first the, these are the ideas and the first drafts and the uh, and the variations these are the second drafts and the more solidified uh, doodads and and this is the uh, material that becomes canon <laughs> <laughs> And of course, the, the 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 more canon you have, you will start having new variations based on that. But basically, it is it's a system that works both ways, or that that feeds it feeds itself both both ways. And now we just need to fill in the adventures to to get the 
to make both of the sides meet. <laughs> Just gotta write it now. Yeah. Easy! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I tried scrolling through your Pinterest then. That's uh, <laughs> screen sharing. I have no control. <laughs> you have no control. Mm -hmm. Neither do many of our, of our characters. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. So, so to recap, we have the specific stories happening to specific characters. And then we have the main arc. And we need to find the connecting stories. And also we, we need to be very selective what we feature and what we what we won't. Because otherwise we're just going to swamp ourselves in the work and, and the story never gets told. Mm -hmm. And the story must be told. Yes. <laughs> Let's save this one. Bam. I think uh, I think this is like this is it. <laughs> <laughs> the goal has been vocalized, verbalized. Mm. Yeah, I I don't think I've got anything else to add. Me neither. Mm -hmm. So I know this has been very very confusing. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know yet what I sh uh, what I should uh, file this under. Is it like? Is it the chat? Is it content creation? Uh, con uh, work session? Is law with law and knocks. <laughs> <laughs> World building. I don't yep. know. I'll I'll figure something out. <laughs> yeah. And so thank you for watching. Yeah, we shall see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.